Good afternoon, everyone. Headlines like global inflation nightmare with the text blistering surge in material costs. Uh, not reassuring for the rest of 2021. FAO food price index, the red streak at the top, way above everything else. That's this year. Put it in a chart form. We're matching 2008, another commodity super cycle. Increasing prices. You know the gov was not going to let you get away with just sitting at home cooking your own food cheaply. Strange how it matched with restaurant prices and all the never-ending money printing. You thought it went into the economy. Uh Uh-uh. It just flowed into the market. Well, another parallel will be is how much money is going in being printed and how high your food costs are going to get. And remember 2019 when the market was going to crash at $100 billion a night to inject into the repo market? Something out of balance here, even in the 2008 and 9 crash. So you ask yourself, is this truly the beginning of the reset? The data of 2.3 million users has been leaked after a hacker managed to find a backdoor into the popular dating site Meet Mindful. The leaked information was personal data including names, Facebook IDs, emails, birth dates, location, and much more. All that information was then uploaded to a public hacking form for anybody to download. Meet Mindful says they've already patched the flaw, but the damage was already done. If you want to prevent attacks like this from happening to you, I highly recommend Virtual Shield. You can head over to virtualshield.com and in the download tab, I'm going to choose Firefox. And click install now to add the Virtual Shield add-on. It's just that easy. And get started with your free 30-day trial. Install it, click connect. You'll see the shield turn from red to green. And you'll see how from my initial service provider, I was able to even change my IP Virtual Shield Network protected. Go to virtualshield.com forward slash adapt 2030 to get Virtual Shield for 50% off today. Or click the link in the description box below. And now on with the video. You know the global awareness is starting to reach a rollover threshold of the amount of people understanding this grand solar minimum when it appears right here on Zero Hedge. What lies ahead, the grand solar minimum, they call it out for what it is. This grand solar minimum and the cooling on a 400-year cycle pushed by solar activity is going to upset the cultural narrative. So here's some blips on the horizon for you to look at. Interesting headlines, global inflation nightmare. And then if you read further down in the article, the authors are using text such as blistering surges in raw material costs. They're equating it to the roaring 20s post-pandemic economic recovery, loose monetary policy, but eh, scratch the record there. There's not going to be a roaring 20s post-pandemic recovery this time. We're going to flip and go crash. And why would I say that? Well... When food prices are doubling, tripling, commodities prices are doubling, tripling, and your wages are decreasing or not available, eh, that's a recipe for disaster. Always has been. Let's look at the FAO food price index. Now, the reddish tan bars there are 2008 through 2014. Remember 2008-9, that was the global financial crisis, this commodity super cycle in play at that time. And as you look at some of the highest numbers post-crash when we got out around 2011, 12, 13, some recovery in the economy, but food was just screaming north compared to, again, what the wages were, what the employment situation was. The world was much more stable. And where do we sit? And the yellow go to the very bottom, the exact same as 2014. If it goes any higher, it's going to be the highest on this chart since 2003. Recipe for civil unrest right in front of you here. So here's some examples of what's happening across other parts of the world. I had a really good conversation with somebody yesterday who's in the grains business. Much appreciated. If you're listening to the video, thanks for spending the time to uh, fill me in in more depth on what the supply chain bottlenecks are and where we're moving forward from here. The U.S. is going to be the last to really feel the, the great shocks, if you will, of food because we're such a major food producer here in the U.S. But other countries, what are the first countries that are going to start to feel it? Okay, you know Afghanistan, Pakistan, 
they're spending already like 30% of their wages on food every month. We here in the United States spend about six. But just the average person in Afghanistan or Pakistan is 30 to 40% of all their monthly wage just goes to food. That's absurd. And then you go to some of the more North African countries too. And if you're looking around, let's say Sudan area, Iria Traya, Chad, etc., they're right up in those same kind of numbers. So this inflation is going to have a gargantuan effect on smaller nations with smaller economies well before the U.S. But here in Indonesia, tofu, which is soybean, 30% more expensive than it was two months ago. Now, I don't know about you, but things that are rising 30% in two months, that's a 15% month-on-month gain. Imagine your food bills going up 15% a month. How long could you handle that before you would get stressed, strapped, or you'd reach out for social services, or you'd ask the government to help? Wouldn't be too long before a predominant amount of the United States would be on that same line, or in the same line, if you will. Now, Brazil, looking at the turtle beans... Up 54%, but that's a full year. So again, you know, what if your food went up 50% a year? So instead of spending a dollar for something, you're spending a dollar fifty. And then if we jump over to Russia, 61% more for sugar. And you know, if you're cooking at home, this is a way for you to save money, especially if you learn how to make breads and you're getting 50-pound bags of grain, hint, hint, from your local co-op. You can go in and get a 50-pound bag of hard red winter wheat right now for about $18. And if you have a hand grinder or if you have an electric mill, you can turn that into flour and then make your own breads. But you're going to need sugar to do that. You're going to need baking soda to do that, yeast. So these are all the things that are going to continue to increase in price. So even if you cook at home, you're still going to get a huge price surge. Distant early warning. Learn how to cook home-cooked foods that you would buy at the store right now. Experiment with anything. Because over on the sticker shock and more out of all news pipeline, 70 brands. And that includes everything that we know in the traditionals, the Bird's Eye, Chef Boyardee, all those Fortune 500 companies that are controlling food from poultry to grains, finished food, crackers, whatever. Anything that's in a store, billions of dollars of livestock moving through their supply chains. They say, quote, we are experiencing inflation right now as everybody else is. So it appears that these Fortune 500 companies are getting pinched at economies of scale as well. So they're buying a million tons of something through the year. You're buying a couple pounds. And then through the pandemic, everything was about, ooh, touchless service, touchless contactless delivery. So everybody went for the fast food. Well, fast food menu prices soaring highest since 2008. Time machine, here's two quarters so you can go back to 2008 and 9. Do you remember the global financial collapse at that point? Three pages to give us trillion dollars so there won't be riots in the streets. Remember all that talk back in the day? We're back at it again. Imagine that. These charts kind of speak for themselves. Right out of the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Limited service means fast food, anything in a drive through Full service is obviously a restaurant, but notice how the price has increased since January of last year. You're going to start to see and experience more and more of these types of price increases. And what I really don't like is, you know, we were forced to stay home, forced to, you know, just revamp our lives in so many ways. But you knew the gov could not let you just go quietly into the night. What happens here? Grocery prices surge to equal restaurant prices. See, they gouged you. I don't know if it's a manipulated plan because there's so much fictitious price fixing in the USDA in the futures market. So it sure wouldn't surprise me if it was across the grocery chains as well. Food at home inflation. Inflation for cooking or preparing foods at home was double what it was at restaurants. Purposeful, I'll let you decide on that. And over to the newest release from the FAO, some of the highest levels we've seen in quite some time, the red streak heading at the beginning of the year. Which direction that going? Also taking a look at the highest gainers out of that entire index, vegetable oils seem to be heading straight north. Now meat's going to catch up. 
I was watching Corbett Wall over at Feeder Flash. Shout out, Corbett. You're always putting out excellent material. If you want to know about the auctions and where the cattle are heading off to the meat packers, Feeder Flash is the one stop you're going to want to make every day. Cattle ranchers are getting pinched below market costs. So every single head that they're selling right now is at a loss. And it seems that the meat packers, there's only four major buyers at the moment. They're all colluding on price. And if the USDA stops subsidies for these cattle ranchers, they're gone. They're going bankrupt. So is it all going to be part of the green agenda to do such a thing like, hey, stop uh, giving subsidies to the cattle producers too much methane? Well, if they do, then they're going to be losing $50 per head going through. Nobody can sustain that. They'll pretty much stop production at that point. But don't worry. You know something that's not going to stop is the printing presses. Infinum QE money printing right here. Big Tex, the beneficiary, because you know how they sold all this money printing was all the bailout packages for me and you and your local business in your city, right? That's how it was portrayed. Got to let us print. I know it's going to cause inflation, but you got to let us print. You know why? We're trying to save the mom and pop business down the street that we put out of business. They're not essential, but look where the money's really gone. You know, they can talk out of one side of their mouth about where this money's going and it's never any money printing and all this inflation in your food, too. Where did it go? Look at the market cap of the tech companies. It's following lockstep with liquidity injection. Unreal. That should be illegal right there. When you see a chart like this, that calls for congressional hearings. Nope, you'll never get that because these companies are the same ones donating to the politicians. Conflict of interest, oh yeah. And to put the cherry on top of this wonderful chocolate cake that's being baked for us, be careful not to step in that chocolate cake. I'm going to take you back to 2019, right around, let's say, September, October, just before the pandemic started. Something called the repo market between banks, hedge funds, bond traders. They would borrow money through the evening, carry out their trades, and then return it. On a one day, usually or a very short term type of borrow. But big institutions back then were getting scared and they didn't want to lend out that money overnight to other quote unquote financial institutions. So the government had to step in and the Fed was injecting $100 billion per night to keep that thing afloat fictitiously and then magically, whoosh, a month and a half later the bug started and then we saw how the world was restructured it staved off that financial collapse for a little while so i'm also asking you know the timing on that versus another massive financial collapse uh, you can do your own judgment on that but where we sit again right here the 16 week cumulative is how much money they're throwing into the stock market to prevent a collapse yet again now, the numbers are not as high as they were to substantiate and keep that repo market moving through the days, weeks, and months. Because they were injecting about $100 billion per night. Bank of America using stunning in their slide. $414 billion. So what's this global equity inflow? Something's way, 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 can I say it again? Way out of balance. So I would expect a huge market correction April I've been calling this for months now. Beware in April. One thing I was trying to say is with this whole great reset, you might take this a little woo-woo or however you want to you know, deal with this information in your head. The financial reset and the great reset. Remember that video that came out and said you will own nothing? Well, I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they were asking me, well, do you really think they would collapse the market before April? Nobody could pay their taxes. And I said, exactly. If you can't pay your taxes, you'll lose your homes. If you lose your homes, who's going to be there to buy it up? All the same companies, they're going to rent it back to you because you'll own nothing. So would the perfect market collapse time not be just as you were getting ready to pay? Remember these times, food's going to get more expensive. Definitely want to stock up on some food because we are for sure going into another wave of insecurity here beyond unknowns coming into April. Who knows what's going to go on here as we move through another economic contraction slash reset. Two-week emergency or the four-week emergency food supply. 
Now, this is storable for 25 years, but, you know, looking at those food price increases, buying this today, you know for sure it's going to cost you less than in three months, six months from now. And if it's storable for 25 years, it's kind of an investment in food because if Staples prices rise as much as I think they are, you're going to be buying this at a substantial discount this month compared to September, October of this year. So I wish you the best in your preparations. The link for My Patriot Supply, as well as the links to all of tonight's slides in the video, are in the description box below. And it's a great way to support the channel so I can continue to bring you research just like this. Because I am sure not going down with the ship on a great reset. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.